So 2016, I started working online as a virtual and content assistant, helping with all kinds of admin and content related tasks, like uploading blog posts and formatting and light graphic design and content writing. I charged about $10 an hour when I got started and slowly over months, I transitioned myself into essentially a content and project manager, and then ultimately a digital business manager where I was able to work less than 40 hours a week and scale my income first by like twofold then slowly threefold and slowly even more than that, which was so, so amazing for my work-life balance and just everything else in my life. And I honestly believe now that I'm on the kind of the other end of it, that a promotion to the role of digital business manager is the best next step for almost all virtual assistants. So what were those steps in between that I took to scale and to promote myself from BA to DBM? What did I do? And what do I recommend to you to do if you want to grow and scale into a DBM role? This is going to be a very step-by-step -step video, and let's talk about that in detail in today's video. By the way, if you're not sure what exactly a digital business manager is or does, I have two whole videos that break that down in detail. I'll link to it in the top right corner here and below in the description box as well. Hey, my name is Daya, freelancer, digital business manager, and most recently an entrepreneur. And as always, you can find sections on the play bar below. If you want to skip to a certain part of the video, your time is precious, take what you need. And if you want to watch this on 2X, I will not be offended in the least. Okay, let's dive straight into the video. So step one, transitioning from a virtual assistant to a digital business manager. The first thing that you'll want to do is definitely craft some sort of a learning training plan curriculum for yourself, a plan for what you want to learn when you're able to learn it based on your schedule and workload right now and map that out over the coming three to six months, depending on how much time you have. I would say generally you should focus on gaining knowledge in three specific things. First up is digital DBM tools. So tools that digital business managers use in the work that they do with clients Two, management training and three, digital business strategy. Just so you have an understanding, enough of an understanding to talk to clients about it when it comes up in conversation. And you can really DIY this learning path if you'd like, just make a complete list of what you'll need to learn. You might not know everything when you first begin, you know, things will pop up as you're learning, that's fine. Like I mentioned, the three core things. So for example, DBM tools like Airtable, Asana, ClickUp, Zapier, Dubsado, all of them have amazing learning resources. You can go check them out, watch them. Two, management training, specifically, I would say project management, team management, operations management, systems management, kind of the behind the scenes of how to run the ops of a digital business. And make sure you're learning these skills for specifically digital businesses and small businesses in particular, because it will be a little bit different. You know, obviously, if you want to go work for a really large company or go to work for project management in corporate, it will look very different to project management for small digital businesses. So just make sure that you are learning the right skill set, the right application to depending on which businesses you want to work with in the future. And three, digital business strategy. So start learning up and studying up on concepts like sales funnels, digital marketing, what's under the umbrella of digital marketing, understanding offer strategy, how people can craft really great offers and create repeatable systems to sell them. How does that all work together? All of that will really, really help you when it comes time to discuss these things with clients. You don't have to be a strategist. You don't have to be the one to bring strategy to the table, but it's just really good if you can keep up as your client is talking about it and one day hopefully offer your own value along the way. So start with that checklist and begin block scheduling some time onto your calendar to learn. Now, if you don't want to DIY this learning path and piece things together from Google or YouTube and kind of want to jump straight to the good sauce, then I'm very excited to introduce the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by me, thanks me, and my course, Digital Business Manager Bootcamp. If you don't want to figure out what you need to learn as a DBM or how to learn it, and you just want to take my five years of experience as a DBM, I'll export it and you can import it straight into your brain. Import, import right here. Check out my course. We cover the three core things I mentioned the checklist just now in all its glorious details. Over 500 incredible people have gone through it already. You'll learn everything you need to scale into a DBM role in a systematic step-by-step -step way accompanied by walkthrough videos, exercises, and tons of bonus templates. I'll also be there talking the whole time, fun times. So anyway, whichever path makes the most sense for you and where you currently are in terms of your budget and your time, I would recommend getting that learning plan down into your calendar so you that that you're really like making a commitment to it. So if you can do one hour a day, add one hour a day into your calendar. If you can do two hours a week, then block those two hours out every week so you can begin taking it very seriously and begin your education. So this DIY way was essentially what I had to do over a few years because I didn't really have a program 
like that was comprehensive that I could learn it from. So I learned everything on my own via Google, YouTube, a lot of frustration working with 40 plus freelance clients and seeing what they needed help with um, behind the scenes and what kind of the issues there were and how I might be able to plug those holes. And that's how I really came upon this role of digital business management. So it's completely doable if you opt for the DIY way, just kind of manage your expectations that'll take you a little bit longer. So whatever you choose, do your best to be consistent with it, whether that's the course or a DIY way, it's just go consistent. This should ideally, this entire learning process should be going on in the background as we work through the rest of the steps that we'll talk about in this video. All right, step two is to let your client know that you've begun training. And I recommend doing this kind of like mentioning briefly that this is happening, you know, as this is like a role you're very much interested in exploring in the coming six months. I would recommend doing this like relatively casually in a weekly call. No need to like make a sweeping declaration or anything like here. You don't need to do that. Something like, you know, I think what I basically said was something like, also, you know, at the end of the weekly call when we're wrapping up, like, oh, I also wanted to let you know that I've just recently enrolled in a training to become a digital business manager, where hopefully one day I'll be able to support your business on a higher level with project team and operations management. So what that could look like is I could help you with things like hiring team members, planning out your new course launch, creating standard operating procedures so you can finally actually take a vacation, that kind of stuff. And yeah, I'll keep you updated as I go along with this training. And I'd actually also love to trial out some of my new skills as I'm learning them in the coming months with you, wherever I can support you more, if that'd be okay with you, just like that. Music to a client's ears, if you phrase it in a way where they see what they're going to get out of you being more highly trained. Every business owner needs help with project team and operations management because nobody starts a business to be a manager of the day-to-day -day operations of that business. They start the business for their vision, for the business, for the product, to serve customers, that kind of stuff. So plant that seed, get them excited and on board early on, give them that super early heads up. So it's not a surprise later on. And they're kind of already like, oh, I can't wait for so-and-so. I can't wait for Sarah to become a DBM. I can't wait. And they start thinking like, what are some things that I can have Sarah do in the future when she scales up to this role with me? Now, step three is arguably the most important step this step is to volunteer yourself to help your client with at least one higher level task a month relevant to your new training or learning. So for example, if you're learning about project management, then offer to build out a small project plan in Asana for your client. Now they don't have to do it and they'll see how awesome it is. If you've just learned about hiring for remote teams, offer to help them create a job description and application form for hiring a new person for the team. This is a humongous, what we call a win-win because this helps you gain experience so you'll have concrete things to talk about when you interview in the future with future clients. It's also great for your confidence to actually have tried it in a real setting. And it's a win for them because it's a great way to show off your new skills to your client and they're getting essentially a free trial, right? Like allow them a free trial. They're taking you as a DBM for a spin and they're going to be loving it. They wanna upgrade from the free trial to the paid version ASAP. Another tip is to identify some areas of inefficiencies in your client's business and create a useful solution, kind of like problem solve, create a system for your client. Like for example, if they don't have an SOP bank, get one started for them. If they could easily automate a manual tedious task that they spend tons of money on, set one up for them. So I would do this over a period of one to three months to really build up your confidence and show off that value to your client of what it could be like. Paint them that like, imagine me as your DBM picture. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> So step four is now to begin making a transition plan for yourself. So begin evaluating which of your clients could potentially have a need for a digital business manager on the team. Look into who could benefit from higher level support, managing team members, project planning, creating systems, that kind of stuff. Some clear signs that a client needs a DBM is if they have a ton of ideas and projects, but nothing is getting done. They desperately need to hire, but they don't have time to hire or they hate it. They're not able to take a vacation ever. Everything in the business lives in their head. There are no documented processes. There is a whole lack of clarity for the team and you, nobody has any idea what's going on. The client wants to work fewer hours, but literally cannot. And things are constantly getting started, but not being finished. Those are just a few of the signs that a client needs you 
in that DBM role. So do a client audit and look through what's going on with their businesses because you know best, like you're actually behind the scenes so you know what's going on and see which clients you're able to move ahead with as planned, as discussed, the ones that were excited about your initial chat and have expressed how hyped they are as you've shown off those skills. And generally, I would separate clients into three buckets. One, definitely needs a DBM. They're very excited about it being me. Amazing. Two, needs a DBM but doesn't have the budget right now. Three, doesn't need a DBM yet. They're not at that place yet. So bucket one is obviously the best bucket. It's our favorite bucket. Definitely prioritize them. Bucket two is interesting because hiring a DBM will help them scale their business income, but they often don't see that connection yet. So help them see that connection, help them see the return on investment in you being a DBM, show them how you will help the business make more money and free up their time to work on what they should work on, which is going to help the business generate more profit. Like a CEO should not be, you know, in a sauna organizing project plans. They should be out there, you know, getting sales, doing partnerships, doing collaborations with others. Those are the things that will actually drive the business revenue and that's the best use of their time. It's not the best use of their time to be doing VA or DBM level tasks. But if they truly aren't interested for now, I normally offer them to do a little bit of DBM work at a discount rate for them. If I was still looking for experience or testimonials of some kind, I normally did that on like a one-off basis, like a small project. This kind of depends on how much you want to keep the client. Um, but yeah, bucket three, I normally just make myself a to-do to check back in in three to six months because chances are if everything is going well for them, they will need you eventually. Or offer to do a one-time small project that they will need like set up an SOP bank and step-by-step -step process for them so they can get started with standard operating procedures with the right foundation for their business. Regardless, continue proving your new value. Make sure to connect this every time you do something cool to the training that you are doing and the role as a DBM so they understand it's the ROI of you moving into a higher level role and they're not just being like, wow, this person's being an amazing virtual assistant. It's like, no, 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 no right we don't want them to connect it to the va we want them to connect it to that digital business manager role because then they start to see ah i see why i would pay this person more to do this role it's because they're bringing more value to my business now step five is to begin applying to dbm roles now we're going to get out there we are going to begin applying externally for dbm roles so not with your existing clients we're going to apply externally to get your feet wet and get experience interviewing for higher level roles. This is super important because we wanna get out there before we're ready to actually get out there. You will never feel ready to begin applying. So once you're in a few months into your training, begin applying. You wanna throw cast your net out there. You wanna get a feeling for the interview, for how you wanna talk about your experience and training, for the types of questions they'll ask you. You wanna have options too, right? I'm always saying like, if you're a freelancer, you should always be pitching, you should always be applying because the person with options is the person with the freedom to choose who they wanna work with and what they actually wanna do day to day. So give yourself options by casting a wide net and begin applying at this step. All right, step six is now to have the talk with your client and make a plan. After you've completed your training, you've demonstrated your amazing value to your clients, I would then have the talk with your client. So this is a bit more of an official talk. So mention to your client, you know, as discussed previously, you've now been training for X months to grow into a DBM role. You've loved everything you've done, you know, and be really specific here. Don't just say, I've loved everything I've done anyway. You know, they might not remember, they're busy. So be specific, list out what you've done for them exactly so they can connect that value again to your promotion as DBM. And mention that you'd love to talk about the opportunity to support them in more of a DBM higher capacity role open up that conversation officially essentially like i mentioned make sure to illustrate clearly how your new skill set is going to help benefit their business uniquely and how you will drive roi so propose some concrete specific ideas for what you can do as a dbm on their team in the future don't make them think about how they can use you in that role tell them how they can use you to their benefit right don't make them have to try to problem solve and be like okay i guess she could do this i maybe she like you know the business you know the client what do they need help with look for those pain points that they have and be that plug right fill those gaps of issues that you know they have they know they have that you know they have <laughs> 
If their game make a plan for when, how, and the money side of what a DBM promotion looks like and how it may come into effect with them, which tasks you can take on first, help them hire a VA underneath you to make the transition as smooth as possible, you can handle that whole process too. You will know how to hire, so it's not even creating more work for them. You're not saying like, well, I'm gonna move into a DBM role and you can find the VA. You're saying, I'll move into a DBM role. Don't even worry about the VA stuff. I will find the VA, I will train the VA, and I'll get them all set up and going. You don't even have to think twice about it and you may have to also do a bit of a fair review of which clients you perhaps have to let go of if they only have interest in having a VA if that is the case and you see absolutely no way they're gonna grow into a business that needs a DBM in the coming six months then I would recommend depending on your level of comfort how many clients you have your cash flow and everything that if you do decide to let them go help them find obviously a suitable replacement and I know this can be difficult so I'm very risk averse, so I always like try to buffer my risk a little. So I normally recommend doing this with clients in stages. So instead of doing it all at once, like I'm a DBM now, you know, uh, I'm going to let you go if you're not interested in my DMM service, I recommend doing it one at a time. And each time, you know, if you do want to let a client go, find a new client to fill an old client's space before letting them go so that you're kind of, yeah, taking those small steps. And make sure to help them always find and train your replacement, right? Make that ending of working with you a really good ending, not that you left and it was all chaotic, because chances are they might want to come back and work with you because you're awesome, or they might be in great business owner networks where they might know somebody that could need your services. So always make sure to also mention your referral scheme to any clients you let go of in case they know of people that need a digital business manager, which if they're in a network of business owners, somebody needs one. It's just how it is. And step seven is it's official. That's it. Confetti. <laughs> Officially swap out your new title to digital business manager. You've made it. Yeah, pop some champagne. Great work. You can swap out your title on your resume, on your LinkedIn, your social media, and that's it. That's how I essentially slowly took my clients from VA clients to DBM clients, the ones that where it made sense. If you want seven additional tips on scaling your income that I truly attribute to that $10 an hour to six figure growth, I'll link that video in the top right corner and in the description box as well. There's some more general freelancing tips and goodies in there. And if you're a VA and you have any questions about DBM work or promoting yourself, let me know below and I'll get back to you. And that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.